So let's take a look at grabbing events from the event logs from multiple computers using PowerShell specifically. So the command that we're going to be using for grabbing the event logs is the get win event command line. And I've got a really simple example here on line 13. I'm just using the log name parameter of system and then telling it to only get me retrieve five events. So using the max events parameter there. And if we run this, it displays the five most recent events uh, in the system log on the computer I'm running it on. And so to turn that into a command that for retrieving remote event logs, we simply use the computer name parameter and everything else stays the same. So now we're going to look at uh, EX01 here and we can see the top or five most recent events in that event log. And you, you saw that it took just a little more time just because it's a remote computer. So we, we aren't usually looking for the five most recent events. So I wanted to show you guys a couple of examples using the filter hash table uh, parameter. It's my favorite parameter and let me show you why. So for instance, here's an example on line 23, you had to use the get win event to get all the logs from the system log that are level one or two. So one is critical, two is error. And then you can see here, I got three warning and four is information. But the notation I'm using for fil filter hash table is a hash table. Uh, you can see that because I've got the at symbol and open curlies here on line 23. And we close it on line 26. And then we've got our key value pairs there. So if we run this commandlet, we should see all of the critical and error logs from the system log on the local computer. So not too many of them. That's good. I mean, it's not, not that they're terrible, but uh, my server is obviously running, so it's not that bad. So another example is if we wanted to get count lockouts. Uh, so I am uh, working on a domain controller here, so I can actually see those in the logs. So I'm using the filter hash table parameter again, log name of security this time. Uh, but this time I'm using the ID of 4740. So that's the specifically the ID of account lockouts. And if you're not sure what those IDs are, you can Google them if you can't find any of your logs currently. So if we run this, we should see that there was one account locked out in my demo environment. That's good. Just one person with fat fingers, but you know, I'm the only person that uses it. So, and then another example here, if, if we wanted to look at events uh, from a specific provider using the filter hash table, I've got, there's a provider name option as well. So I've got that here in this next example. And then in this case, I'm looking at the group policy provider. So we should see all the events related to group policy in the system log. So I'm still using the log name here. And oh, there's a few of them. So we got some, an error and a bunch of informational stuff. Uh, so how would we use these on multiple computers? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, so what we're going to use is a for each loop. Uh, and if you're not familiar with for each loops already, Adam's got a really great snip on how to use for each loops. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on how it works. Uh, I'm just going to show you how to use the get one event inside of a for each loop. So in this case, I'm specifying each computer here explicitly. So I'm saying computer name equals when I got my two uh, demo server names here on line 50, I'm using the computer name parameter for each of those. And then I'm looking at the system log and looking for all the critical and error events on both of these computers. So if I run this snip, it's going to output all of the errors for both of those computers. Cool. So for the account lockout, those events only occur on domain controllers. So we can actually do an active directory query. So assuming you have the active directory module installed and loaded. So I'm using this get 80 domain controller and looking for all of them. So it's this filter asterisk there and selecting using select object to just expand the name properties so that the computer name variable is just a list of the names of all of our domain controllers. And then for each of those, I'm going to get, uh, use the get win event commandlet again and give it the name of that computer. And we're, we're looking for that ID 4740. So, so again, this is just the account lockouts. So if we run this, this is going to spit out all the lockouts on all of our domain controllers. Boom. And it's just one. I got a demo environment with just one domain controller. But if I'd encourage you to, if you want to run this in your environment with more domain controllers, uh, it'll still work, assuming you have permissions to. So then uh, here's the fun one. If we wanted to use uh, Git80 computer and look at all computers in our Active Directory environment, um, so I'm using the Git80 computer commandlet filtering for all of them, and excuse me, using the select object commandlet to expand the name property. So this is looking at all of the computers in Active Directory. So this could take a while if you have a lot of computers. I've only got a few in my demo environment. I actually have a typo. So computer name is not filled out there. So I'm going to type in computer name computer. So that it actually gets connects to our remote computers. 
In this case, I'm looking at the system log, looking for events from the group policy provider that are critical and error. So let's see how many critical and errors we have on all of our computers in Active Directory. We don't have very many. That's good. Uh, but at the same time, you know, if we want to see, just so you guys know, I've only got two computers in Active Directory in my demo environment. So that, that's why I didn't take very long. Okay, so uh, the last thing I want to quick go over is when we're looking at a bunch of computers, it can get uh, to be kind of a drag because this output for this last commandlet, it doesn't tell you which of these events happened on which computer. Uh, so one thing we can do to get that output to look a little better is to store the value inside of a custom object and then output that to CSV. So here on line 79, I'm going to declare that object. And again here, I'm going to use the get80 computer for all of them. And again, my get win event does not have the computer name uh, parameter. So I'm, I'm going to add that in so that it works the way we expect. Um, but it's the same for each loop. Um, but instead of outputting get win event uh, here on line 82, you notice I'm assigning the output to the events uh, variable. And then I'm doing another for each loop down here. So for each of those events, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that event variable and I'm using the add member commandlet. So that's going to add another property to that variable. And I'm adding a computer name property and giving it the value of the name of the computer. And then this pass through parameter will tell the add member commandlet to then spit the object back out into the pipeline, which will then get assigned to the output variable. Uh, and then here at the end of it, I'm actually taking the output of output and, and exporting it to CSV. Uh, so that I can actually open it up in Excel and take a look at it. So then if we run this, we're not going to get any output here. So then if we take a look at that, uh, that CSV file, uh, we can see that it has uh, up here in the headers here. So the message and computer name. So computer name is the header that we added on. Uh, so then if we look for the first comma here, there we go. So on the second line here, we got DC01. So that's uh, the events, the event from DC01, and then down here we got events from EX01. Uh, so I, I don't have Excel installed on my domain controller because you know typically people aren't using Excel on domain controllers. So that's why we're looking at it through Notepad. So anyway, that's how you pull events uh, from the event logs from multiple computers or servers using PowerShell.